Uh, still a little bit of sun. Oh, we don't see it often, but anyway, let's have a look at what we have. Ah, now this one, of course, an added bonus of this one, it does have some of the tools. I think I've only got the hose and the two extension tubes, unless Steve managed to find any more tools. Um, but at least I've got the hose, which is the main thing. I probably can get the crevice tool and the other tools that came with this. I'll probably find those on eBay at some point. What I might do is pull out. Ah. Right, here's the, the hose. I think this is a much later style of hose. I'm assuming, I think it's still an original hose. But it's very nice to have. I did want to have a hose so I could demonstrate the cleaning tools. Obviously the first hoses that came with the 500 series were the braided type of hose. I've seen this hose in other colours as well. I think I've seen it in a silver or a black, but with, yeah, I think it was silver with brown, a brown handle. This is white, but I think it is original and I think there'll be another extension tube inside the box. Yes, let me just reach in. Another extension tube. That'll all clean up nicely. A little bit of uh, cream cleaner. And that looks like that's it. So, we'll give birth to this vacuum. I'll keep this box though. A lovely Hoover Turbo Power Boost box. And somebody bought this from Curry's, not Curry's, Comet, sorry, in 1994. Or is that a six? Let's have a look. It's always interesting. 94, I believe. Yes. So there we have. Oh, I'd have loved this. Loved a brand new turbo power. Would have been lovely. Now, at first glance, this is in better condition certainly in better condition than the one I received before and it's completely intact the, the, oh it's great the flex looks fine looking at the handle that was cracked on the one I received before that is fine so not the handle the um, carry handle that's what I meant to say and looking at this no damage excellent i'm really pleased isn't it amazing though everything is in much better condition than the one i received it's so funny that it was only a week or two ago that i got one of these and um you know had a bit of problem with it and now i've got another one to replace it so if i can't get this working i'm sure with my working one and this I'll get a working model. This one is, is certainly in better condition with the bonus of the hose and the tubes. Excellent, I'm really pleased. Yep. And as you can see, this that was broken on the one I received from eBay, that's fine. So apparently it's, it's not working. Oh, it's in much, much better condition. I'm very pleased with this. Now, I think maybe, I, I don't think the belts, I've got some new belts. The belt is, is either very loose or it's, it's broken. The brushes look in very good condition. Ah, unlike the one I received, it has twin brushes. Um, there we go, can you see them now? I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to what I was showing you. But I can use the beta brushes the beta bars that came with my other one on this if I want to. I might do a little comparison, that might be interesting. I do a little line of, uh, I was going to say line of shame, do a bit of a, what do I call that? Bag of filth. Get my bag, I'm forgetting what I call these things. Get my bag of filth out. Do one line going over with just the brushes. Pause the camera fit the beta bars and do another line with that, see if that makes any difference. This is in very good condition underneath. Excellent. I'm really pleased. 
with this. This is going to clean up very nicely. Now, Steve, as I said, Steve says it's not working. I don't know if he just plugged it in and nothing happened. Or it's the fact that the possibly the brushes aren't rotating, but that's an easy fix. No bag, but that's okay. Another thing that's not damaged on this one, on the one I got from eBay, the insulation here was coming away, exposing the inner wires. That's fine. There's no bag, but I recently bought some new bags. Dirty filter, I've got some new filters upstairs, and I've got new belts as well. The brushes look fine on this. So I've got everything, hopefully, I need to restore this vacuum cleaner. I'm so pleased with it. So pleased. Obviously, a little the main damage you get on vacuums is scuffing here. I mean, there is a bit, but it's not. they're not terribly deep scratches. All in all, it's in much, much better condition. I would say the only thing that's a little bit worn is on here. There's a little red, not red, orange bit of paint that's worn down. I'll have to check the one I've got. I might replace that if the one I've got's in better condition than that. I might just swap that over. But I can't really see anything else that I would swap over because this is in much better condition. And this one has Made in Britain sticker. I think I'll keep that on there or maybe move it somewhere a bit less um, noticeable. I'm not sure. I might keep it. I might uh, put it back on but straighten it out. I don't know what, what I'm going to do with that yet. So all in all that's excellent. Let's plug, plug the hose in, see if that fits okay. So here's the cover for the tool inlet. We just have to lift that off. It's going to clean up very well. And here's the hose, which just goes in, goes in this way up with this sort of little cup shape uppermost. So that redirects the suction. A nice rubber seal. And then we've got the hose for all our above floor cleaning. So if this is missing, it would have come with a crevice tool and Electrolux's dual purpose, I think they called it butterfly tool. So it had a brush on one end and you could open out the two wings to form an upholstery nozzle on the other. It might have come with a hard carpet and hard floor nozzle, but I believe some of the later cleaning tool kits did, did away with that. But for the time this was a current model, to have this easy tool set up compared to the ones you got with Hoover at the time, the only one, only Hoover model that would have been available around the time this was that had easy to plug in tools at the back was the Hoover convertible. Now it's called, it was called convertible in the UK but I believe in the USA, hello any of my viewers from the United States and Canada, I believe in your countries it was called Dilematic but we, we, it was known as convertible in the UK, but I know convertible is something different in the USA again, because what we called our senior or deluxe cleaners were con book call, called convertibles in the USA. It's all very confusing. I'm confusing myself. But anyway, this system of just being able to plug the hose in, twist, much easier than the pan converter or the front converter that Hoover had on their juniors much easier and it was much more powerful suction as well being a clean air system so I'm really pleased with this and again thank you very much Steve I haven't sent you a, a thank you yet I will do I'll email you and I will be featuring this cleaner again it's going to need cleaning up but it's not going to need a lot of work I'm very very pleased with this that's, that's a little bit of so I think it could be just be a very simple thing, it could be just the fuse, it could be there could be a short in the cable, that often happens near where, the, where it enters the machine, or possibly where the plug's wired, or it could be that the suppressor in the handle has blown up like it did on my last video. If that's the case, it's just a question basically of removing the suppressor and reconnecting everything and it should work fine. Well, I'm just going to, I know I'm a glutton for punishment, but I'm just going to just see if it works. I've been told it doesn't, but as I say, I'm not sure if Steve meant it's completely dead or the brushes aren't going round. So 
I'll just pop it on minimum at the top there and uh, we'll plug it in. Okay, I've got it plugged in at the socket but not turned on at the socket. There's no light illuminating here. So first thing I'll check is we'll see, when I actually turn it on at the socket, we'll see if the mains on indicator illuminates. If it doesn't, the first thing I will check is obviously the fuse and the connections. As I say here, it's possible, but oh, this, this strain relief is supposed to prevent sort of the cord becoming damaged here, but that's always the point of the most sort of strain where it enters the machine or near the plug. Anyway, I'm going to switch on and we'll just see if this light illuminates. Okay. Yes, it does. So obviously power is getting to the cleaner. Now, this time if anything happens, we might be able to see something going on, but uh, we'll see. Oh, my heart's going already. Flashbacks to my previous near-death experience. Okay, it's on now, so let's just switch it on at the socket and see if anything happens. Well, it's working. And the brushes are going round. So, well it works Steve, so I'm not sure what happened there. It was on the minimum setting, so let's turn up the speed and just check it's okay. Let's hope this one doesn't blow up, but what I will do when I finish this video, I will open up the handle and remove the suppressor, just in case. But everything seems to be working fine. It's on minimum, so we'll see if the electronic control works. Oh my God! <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't believe that's happened. I don't know if you caught that because this time it tripped my sockets, it tripped the ring main circuit upstairs when I turned it on again. And it's the same thing. Oh, and it's still, it's smoking. I've unplugged it, haven't I? Yes. I don't know if we can see, I'm not sure. Where am I? I can't see what I'm doing. Can you see? I'm not sure if you can see it. But it is smoking. It is smoking from the handle. It's explo- it's, ex it's done exactly the same thing. I cannot believe it. <sighs> wow. Ticking time bomb. If you ever get an Electrolux 500 series take out the suppressor, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open it up now, make this video a little bit different. I'm going to take the handle off, but that is good. It's good in a way because it's nothing major. I know that once the suppressor's out of this, it should work fine. So I'll get a screwdriver and we'll see what's inside and hopefully it's still smoking at the top. Hopefully the smoke will have cleared. Okay, it's still smoking away. I've undone the screws. Let's have a look behind here. Oh. Well, it's not, uh, it's not exploded in such a dramatic fashion as my last one. Obviously, it's unplugged now. That's popped off. That is what caused the little explosion. As I say, I'm not sure if you caught it because it did trip the electrical wiring and I was recording on mains power so it might have just cut out as soon as it went bang, unfortunately. You might, I don't know, I'll have to check back on the video, but it, it's still, I don't know if you can see that, if it, you can still see the smoke. But it is smoking away. Ooh! So... <laughs> absolutely amazing that that's, oh, it's all coming out. Oh, it's, oh, it's all, all bits in there. It's, um... It's... It's astounding that I was just saying about this. I'm saying, oh well, hope it's okay. And I should have taken this out first, shouldn't I? So anyway, as I say, if you get yourself uh, an Electrolux 500 series upright vacuum, can be any of them, from the 500, 502, 502S, 504, 506, 550, 560, I think there was a 555, and then the new, newer style twin turbos, Ah, oh, no, they might be different because the newer style twin turbos had the switch 
at the top of the bag compartment, but probably still had a suppressor. So why, why are they so prone to doing that? So that's the first part of it disconnected. Let's just see where else. It's a little bit of a different setup. Ah, oh, is that? Oh, I was going to say, I thought it was wired in differently. No, it's under there. I think the next wire I need to undo. So it will work perfectly well without this suppressor in. It's not going to cause any harm to anything not having it in. And correct me if I'm wrong, people of a more technical background than me, but I think suppressors were fitted to vacuum cleaners to prevent them from interfering with your radio and TV reception. But I think in the digital age we live in now, I don't think they have that effect. And I'm just worried now. I mean, this has never happened. It seems to be... It's happened... This is a third time. So they say things go in threes, so hopefully this third time is the last. It happened, of course, with the, the first 560 I got. It happened with a Hoover Dastet recently I bought. That um, didn't go pop on camera, unfortunately. And this is the third one for it to happen with. But I'm just worried now that all the other vacuum cleaners I've got, are they going to be ticking time bombs as well? Oops. I hate that, don't you, when the screw falls down? Fortunately, it's fairly tidy around here, so I was able to locate it. I think that's it. Yeah. That can just screw back, just put that screw. It does seem a little bit different, the setup in here to the one I had before. I think this may be a later version. That should just pull out. I might have to cut that. I've got some scissors. I just need to cut that off because it won't slide through. It won't matter. I don't need it. There we go. Okay, so that's the suppressor removed. Everything is connected back up. That seems a bit long. They've left... I don't need that much in there. There's, there's a, a cord tie. I can just trim that off. Don't need that. So, that's okay. That's still wired up correctly. Everything's wired up as it should. Just pop the handle back on and then we'll, we'll turn it on again. I'm just going to do up the screws now. And fingers crossed, everything will be fine. It's got the lower screw just off camera, just doing that up. And now, <laughs> well, it's not going to explode again, certainly not from the handle. I'll try it one more time. Okay, so it's plugged in. I'm just going to switch it on at the socket. Hopefully the mains on light will illuminate. Has it? Yes, it has. Okay, I'm going to switch it off at the socket now. Turn it on at the switch. And hopefully everything will be hunky-dory. That seems fine. Phew. Okay, now get back to the part I was before we had the little explosion and we'll just adjust the speed control and make sure that's working fine. That sounds better than the last one I had, much better. I'm just going to get a bag and uh, I'll give it a quick go and just judge the suction of the cleaning tools. Here's a packet of bags I bought from Amazon last week. For the previous 560, this one is in so much better condition. It's obviously the handle's not broken, but everything about it, it's much better. It's, uh, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Apart from, you know, we've had the minor explosion, but apart from that, excellent. No bag fitted to this. I do have the bag clip for reusable bags with the other one, so that can be used with this. But new bags, they don't actually have, they're not reusable, so you don't need the bag clip anyway. This is what you get nowadays, a genuine, I mean, it doesn't look genuine, does it? The Electrolux bags of old, I remember them having a yellow top, a lot of printing on the top, you know, it's important and this way, blah, blah, so to speak. So, 
I'm not sure if it's a twin. I think, I'm not sure if we've got a twin layered bag or just a single. I th I'm not sure. I don't know if it's, if it's a twin layered bag. Obviously I'm going to fit new filters, fit new a new belt, clean the filter that's in the cage at the bottom underneath the removable filter. So I'll just pop the bag into the top. I just love this about the Electrolux cleaners. Such an easy bag change. You know, it made the Hoover Junior and Senior look very dated with the, the rubber band that you had to move back and you had to fold the bag over that tube. This way, you just, it's a very good design. Very good design. And I'm not surprised it ran for so long. It looks, it is a little bit tight, this genuine bag at the top, but I will persevere and, and fit it in correctly. Much tighter than the original bags, I think, but it's in. It'll hold down when I close the handle. It's still got the little sponge seal. Oops. There we go. So I'll switch on again. We'll, we'll turn it on and I'll just feel the suction at the hose end. Okay, I've got the hose attached. So I'll switch it on, starting on minimum. And just, just give me a rough idea how powerful it is. Not, not great to modern standards, but certainly for the time, pretty good. Pretty good suction. Let's have a look at the underside of the machine before I go. You see this rotating. I'm saying it needs a new belt. I will fit one, but for the purpose of the quick demo I'm about to do, I don't think it needs one. The brushes certainly look in good condition. It's not going to, I don't know, it might be a bit slipping the brush. We'll see, we'll soon know when I start using it. But I think I'll, I will need a new brush. It doesn't seem very tight at all. In fact, we can just have a look. Now, I would normally say unplug, unplug before doing this, but there's, you know, there's nothing under here that's gonna give me an electric shock. It says remove plug, so don't do what I do, folks. Let's quickly take this off. I'm very familiar with this style of cleaner because my mum had the 502 and I was always, I was always taking this base plate off, always cleaning it. It was the best serviced vacuum cleaner in East Grinstead now. So that comes off. It's all very easy. And then you can actually take this base plate off. This will all be cleaned up. This little bit here can be moved along like that. And then you can remove the internal hose. I won't do it now, it's a bit gunked up. So, obviously this is the suction channel here, central suction channel. And this, yes, that. The belt, I will change the belt, why not? Before I do my quick demo, I'll change the belt because that's going to improve the performance no end. I've got this old packet of belts here. I was selling a few of these on eBay and these didn't sell, which is a good thing because <laughs> I came across, I've been sorting out a load of stuff and uh, came across these and I thought, oh, well that's handy. I don't need to buy any new belts and these are genuine Electrolux belts. So they fit all these cleaners, look. From the 500, 502, 502S, 504 and these I think these were, these were dirty fan cleaners, the 400 series, there's a 414 and 411. If you want to see one of these in action, you can check Ryan's YouTube channel, U5096. He's demonstrated at least one of these type. I remember seeing them and remember having brochures for them. I've never actually used one. But anyway, they're not as common to get as the 500 series. So I will take a packet, well not a packet, I'll take one of, the one of the two belts out of this. So these are the proper, genuine belts, probably made by Electronux themselves. 
we'll just remove the brush roll it just lifts out I'm very very pleased with this very pleased and I'll soon have this looking as near as new as I can I won't of course be brand new. Now I've only got small fingers so I can get my finger in. It's very awkward to fit because there's not a lot of room. The easiest thing to do <laughs> is that take the belt out. Now the tricky part is getting it in. The motor spindle is just here and it needs just you just need to find a place to push it behind you don't have to be using anything sharp, you could use a blunt screwdriver. I've managed to get it on, so it is on the spindle now. So now it's going to be a case of popping the belt over the brush roll. Now it's a big, a big pull. You must make sure, of course, that there are two indentations, two sort of oblong pieces. You need to line those up with the end caps. This will all be taken apart again and cleaned, but just for the purpose of the demo, a new brush, uh, sorry, a new belt. As I say, I don't think it needs new brushes. Just need to get that in the right position. This, this is always, always the trickiest part to stretch the belt. Once you've got one in, just try to get it in there. There we are, nearly. That's, ooh, that's one side. Once I've got one side in, I need to get the other side in. I should have taken this bit off, it would have been easier. In fact, I will do, because you can't see what I'm doing. Let's pull that out, there we are. That's better. Bit of fluff fell out. So that gives me all that access into there if we've got a blockage. So now I can just locate this. Whoops. I don't think I've broken anything. There we are. That's it. Check. This it rotates smoothly, that's fine. Let's just get rid of that fluff. There we go. So I'm just, you know, as I say, I'm very pleased with this and I'm just amazed at the universe, what the universe can provide. After my disappointment of the other one, it was, apart from, of course, the, the broken handle, it wasn't in very good condition. And then, after my disappointment to that, I get offered this one. So, you know, I suppose this cosmic ordering, there is something to it, perhaps. I think there is, you know, if you've, any of you who know what cosmic ordering is, it's basically the Argos catalogue in the universe. You sort of pick out what you want and say to the universe, I want this. And the universe delivers. Well, it's not quite that simple. But I'm truly a believer in what you focus on, you will get. That includes negative things as well. So, and I believe in karma. I believe that people who do negative things towards other people will get their, will get their just desserts. So I try to live now on the principle of treat others like you want to be treated yourself and you will be rewarded. But I do know, just this little anecdote before I demonstrate this. When I was younger, obviously all I focused on was vacuum cleaners. I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of you will identify with what I'm saying. Even the younger viewers often would think about vacuum cleaners. I mean, I was very young when I started liking vacuums and that's all I was interested in. And I would bore people to death. When I wasn't boring people talking about vacuums, I was getting brochures, reading about them, and I used to stick, you know, cut brochures out and stick them on my wall in my bedroom. So I didn't have pop stars on my walls. No, I had vacuum cleaners on my walls. Um, but anyway, there was one occasion, and this is why I believe, you know, this, the universe provides. I wanted a Hoover Constellation. I mean, this is years and years ago. And, you know, I had a picture of one on my wall next to my bed and it was the last thing I saw when I went to sleep and the first thing I saw when I woke up and I was thinking I'd love one, I'd love one. And then within weeks, I got two. I think I had to pay £10 each for them. You know, I didn't get them free, but I got, I got what I focused on. 
So I must, I must try that again. There's plenty of vacuums I'd like. I'm not focusing hard enough nowadays. You know, we have busy lives now. I don't have such time to daydream. Anyway, that's the new brush fitted. Last shot you'll see is, it's quite a lot of mess now, a bit of fluff that's appeared. So we'll see if this vacuum works. I'll have it on max. It's on max here. I'll use it on maximum on the electronic control and have it on its lowest height setting. We've got a little bit of mess on the carpet. I haven't put it down. It's just what fell out of the machine when I was putting a new belt in. So I'll start off a minimum and go up to the boost setting. I think a little bit of oil needed, possibly on the bearings and the squeaky wheels. It certainly had um, a deeper growl than the one I tried before. When I was using the other one I got, it didn't seem to be picking anything up at all. But even without beta bars, it still got that growl as if it's beating. That is excellent. So there you go, Steve, it is working. But I will restore this. It's not going to take much, but I will strip it down give it a thorough wash and a polish and do a proper demo. I'll put down lots of dirt and do a proper demo. Hopefully also in the meantime I might be able to get my hands on the rest of the cleaning tools. But anyway, this, this video ends a lot happier than the last video featuring the Electrolux 560. I'm absolutely delighted with this. It's very good. It's obviously, it doesn't seem to have a, had a great deal of use. It seems to have been looked after. But now I've removed the ticking time bomb in the handle. It should continue to provide many years of faithful service. This particular model isn't though, bless it. It will get demoed, obviously, but uh, it will just join my collection. It's not going to be a regular machine to use. But it's still going to perform. I, I mean, I'd be surprised if it doesn't pick up very well. Obviously, you're, you're used to my demonstrations, my bag of filth demonstrations on modern current vacuum cleaners, and I think this one will give them a run for the money. And the wattage, I think it's 500 and something. Let's check the, ba the rating plate. I think it's 550. 550 watts, I believe. I haven't shown you this, have I? I don't know if I can, actually. Not with a camera in that position, it's fixed on my tripod. Can we quite see? I don't think we can. But anyway, I can't read it. Let's have a look. It's very hard to read the serial number of this vacuum. Possibly in the full demo, I'll be able to show you that in a bit more detail. But yes, it will clean up and polish up very nicely. So once again, Steve, thank you very, very much for this. I am absolutely delighted finally to have a nice condition working Electrolux 560 to go with my small but growing Electrolux collection. Thanks for watching, please check me out on Facebook, there's a link below or just search Ibasiac on Facebook, you'll see lots of exclusive content on there all about vacuum cleaners and of course if you haven't subscribed please do so and you'll be updated every time I upload a new video. So until the next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.